Ellen DeGeneres, Jimmy Fallon, and Leah Michelle are all celebrities who have been exposed for not being exactly how they portray themselves. So let's take a look at 10 celebrities who warned us about their co-stars. Starting off, we have Rebel Wilson. Now there's a lot of drama going on due to Rebel Wilson releasing a memoir, and it has shown us some insight into the actress's life. Rebel has revealed that her Grimsby co-star, Sasha Baron Cohen, is the previously unnamed Hollywood a-hole that is allegedly attempting to stop her writing about him in her upcoming memoir. He's hired a crisis PR manager and lawyers. He is trying to stop press coming out about my book, but the book will come out and you will all know the truth. I will not be bullied or silenced by high-priced lawyers or PR crisis managers, she said. Now the a-hole I am talking about in one chapter in my book is Sasha Baron Cohen. Now she went into more detail saying that there were some incidents on set. She also claimed that when she was asked to do reshoots, including for a sex scene, which made her feel uncomfortable on set. I filmed the scene after demanding rewrites, but I still had to simulate having sex with this guy. I still had to kiss him repeatedly, noted Wilson. She then told producers that she would not be doing any promotion for the film, and Rebel added the movie bombed, which to me was karma enough. Now there's Lola Glondini. Everyone made fun of Amber Heard about her issues with Johnny Depp, but Lola Glondini had a very similar incident while on set with him. They were on the set of the movie Blow in 2001 when the incident happened. On the Powerful Truth Angels podcast, Lola said that the director Ted Deme instructed her to burst out laughing in a scene where Johnny gives a monologue. But she didn't know that Ted didn't tell Johnny about this. Johnny Depp, when they say cut, walks over to me, comes up to me, sticks his finger in my face and goes, who the F do you think you are? Who the F do you think you are? Shut the F up. Lola said. I'm out here and I'm trying to effing say my lines and you're effing pulling focus. You effing idiot. Now she said on the podcast that this was her first day on set and the first time she met Depp. This was my first studio movie. I've just done indies until then. And I have the star who I have idolized, who I am excited to work with, ring me in my face. The only thing going through my head was don't cry. Next up is Tina Fey. In September 2023, Rolling Stone published an expose about the allegedly toxic work environment on the set of The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. Former employees claim that Jimmy Fallon dropped his happy and kind persona behind the scenes and was prone to suddenly becoming snappish and ill-tempered. Now, writers for the show also said that they received deflating feedback from Jimmy as well. Now, the Rolling Stone piece inspired Twitter users to start digging up old dirt on Fallon. New Yorker archivist Aaron Overbay's contribution was an expert from Tina Fey's memoir, Bossy Pants. In it, Fey recalls how Amy Poehler immediately let Fallon know that she was not going to kato him just because she was the new kid in the Saturday Night Live writer's room. Polar was ready to let her raunch flag fly upon her arrival, but apparently one of the newbies' crass jokes offended Fallon. He turned to her in a faux squeamish voice and said, stop that, it's not cute, I don't like it, Faye wrote. Amy dropped what she was doing, went black in the eyes for a second, and wheeled around on him. I don't effing care if you like it. Now, Polar seemed offended that Fallon was expecting cute comedy from the comedian. However, it seems that Polar was able to get over her seemingly annoyance with Fallon's prudishness after she exerted her dominance, and Faye claimed that their relationship was amicable overall. On to Nikki de Jager. Nikki Tutorials, also known as Nikki de Jager, is a Dutch makeup artist and a beauty vlogger. Now, after she came out as transgender to her 13 million subscribers on YouTube, she was invited to Ellen DeGeneres' show. Now, as we all know, Ellen isn't exactly how she portrays to be. Nikki said that the friendly, welcoming atmosphere you see when watching Ellen isn't the reality in the studio. She suggested that Ellen was cold and distant when the cameras were turned off, and that Ellen didn't even say hello to her. She also said when she arrived, she was greeted by an angry intern who was a bit overworked, and that in her words, I expected a Disney show, but I got a Teletubbies after dark. Nikki added that she didn't receive the same VIP treatment as other celebrity guests, saying every guest at Ellen had a private toilet, but she didn't, and she couldn't even use the closest toilet to her because it was reserved for the Jonas Brothers. Now, after she revealed this, Nikki's fans who watched the interview said they were inclined to believe the YouTuber. You can tell in the interview that she was so disappointed about Ellen, like it breaks my heart, a YouTube commenter wrote, I believe her. Ellen just seems odd to me in a way I can't quite explain. Her TV persona seems very fabricated, another added. Now let's talk about Lucy Liu. Bill Murray and Lucy Liu worked on Charlie's Angels together, and in a 2021 podcast interview, Lucy claimed that Bill lashed out at her while they were rehearsing a scene together for Charlie's Angels. Now, Bill was reportedly frustrated with changes made to a scene in his absence from a previous rehearsal. Lucy 
then said Bill's comments were inexcusable and unacceptable. It said that he even stopped a scene in progress and pointed to Drew Barrymore, Cameron Diaz, and Lucy Liu, saying in order, I get why you're here and you've got talent, but what the hell are you doing here? You can't act. But Lucy said, I was not going to just sit there and take it. So yes, I stood up for myself and I don't regret it. Because no matter how low on the totem pole you may be or wherever you came from, there's no need to condescend or to put other people down. And I would not stand down and nor should I have. Then there's Tippi Hurden. Tippi Hurden became an actress after she was discovered by director Alfred Hitchcock while appearing on a television commercial in 1961. Now she achieved great praise for her work in two of his films, The Birds and Marnie. With all the success though, Tippi revealed that Hitchcock made offensive demands on her. She said, he stared at me and simply said, as if it was the most natural thing in the world, that from this time on, he expected me to make myself sexually available and accessible to him however and whenever and wherever he wanted. Now Hitchcock's demands led to a horrible, horrible fight, according to her. She then told him Marnie would be their last film together and later recalled how Hitchcock told her he would destroy her career. He said, I'll ruin your career, and he did ruin my career. He kept me under contract and paid me to do nothing for close to two years. Now Tippi said this essentially ruined her career as a leading lady and it's such a shame. Moving on to Kim Cattrall. Sex and the City stars Kim Cattrall and Sarah Jessica Parker have been engaged in a long simmering feud. On Piers Morgan's Life Stories in 2017, Kim said that Sarah could have been nicer about her refusal to take part in the third Sex and the City movie. She also added that the four stars of the show were never friends. Cattrall went further in February 2018 following the death of her brother Chris. After Parker wrote a comment of condolence on Cattrall's Instagram, Cattrall posted a photo of a message that read, I don't need your love or support at this tragic time, at Sarah Jessica Parker. Kim then accused Sarah of exploiting our tragedy to restore her nice girl persona, adding, your continuous reaching out is a painful reminder of how cruel you really were then and now. Now Sarah has consistently denied that she has ever fallen out with Kim. Then there's the entire Glee cast. Now it appears that the entire Glee cast had an issue with Leah Michelle. Samantha War spoke up on her experiences with Leah when Leah spoke out in support of Black Lives Matter. Remember when you made my first television gig a living hell? Cause I'll never forget it, Samantha tweeted at Leah in all caps. I believe you told everyone that if you had the opportunity, you would shh in my wig, amongst other traumatic microaggressions that made me question a career in Hollywood. Now, Leah's close co-worker Naya Riviera also spoke about her negative experiences with her in her memoir. She said the actress kept threatening to call SAG about the unsafe working conditions, and she also said in regards to Leah, so I guess you can throw a fit, lock yourself in your trailer, stall production, yet still allegedly find time to leak stories to the press. Next up is Freddie Prince Jr. In 2010, Freddie Prince Jr. joined Kiefer Sutherland's action series 24, and when he gave an interview about his time on the show a few years later, he didn't have anything positive to say about the star. Freddie said that Kiefer was unprofessional and that he hated every moment of working with him. It turns out that Kiefer was more than a little unprofessional while filming their scenes together. Freddie says, that's not me talking trash, I'd say it to his face. I think everyone that works with him has said that. I just wanted to quit the business after that, so I sort of stopped. Freddie continued on in his interview. Yikes. Now imagine being so horrible on set that your co-star quit their profession. That is just so messed up. And finally we have Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal is notoriously difficult to work with, so I feel like if you still hire him, that's on you. Now after hosting Saturday Night Live in 1991, Steven was banned from the show by producer Lauren Michaels because he was difficult to work with. While they never got too specific, the crew admitted that they did not like working with the martial artists and even found him annoying. Now the show's cast and crew were on edge and almost ran an entire show without a host. Then fellow actor John Lee G. Zamo opened up about working with Steven. He said, I'm playing this master sergeant and we come in for rehearsals and he says, I'm in command. Everything I say is law. And I was like, ha ha ha. I started cracking up because he sounded stupid. He came up and taekwondo me against the brick and hit me with his elbow. He's six foot five and he caught me off guard and knocked all the air out of me. And I was like, why? Why'd he slam me against the wall? We were rehearsing. Now, in addition to getting physical on set, Steven is also known for getting physical off set set as well. Well, that's all for our list of the top 10 celebrities who warned us about their co-stars. Did anyone on our list shock you? Let us know in the comments down below and we'll see you next time.